Welcome to Connected World, a podcast for engineers to learn more about the trending topics influencing the connected world and technology turning today's impossible into tomorrow's awesome. Hello and welcome to Connected World, a podcast from TE Connectivity. I'm Tyler Kern. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of the show. Today we're discussing Wi-Fi, where it is currently, where it's moving in the future, and some of the relevant details that you need to know. So joining me today for this conversation is Chris Lee. He is a product manager for antennas at TE Connectivity. Chris, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, Tyler. It's great to chat with you today. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm excited to talk about this, Chris, because right now it feels like people are more reliant on Wi-Fi than maybe ever before, right? You have tons of people around the world working from home, relying on that home Wi-Fi. And so it really has um, maybe elevated its importance in the day-to-day lives for people. So let's talk a little bit about the current state of Wi-Fi. What is the current state of Wi-Fi? Where are we in the life cycle of this technology? You're right, Tyler. Wi-Fi is wonderful. We, we rely on it probably more than we think. I mean, did you, did you know that most of our cell phones uh, often use our Wi-Fi signal in conjunction with GPS to locate us more precisely? I mean, it's especially uh, obvious for places where GPS doesn't reach, like tunnels, large buildings, and underground structures. Hmm. Um, I mean, but we're getting to a point where, you know, like a stable Wi-Fi connection, like you mentioned, as we are working from home more, uh, is, is becoming really critical. I mean, if we stop and think about all the connected devices we have or, or will have, all these connections are going to cause congestion, very much like traffic on a freeway. Uh, there's going to be continuous needs to find new ways to manage these connections, and more importantly, the data uh, has to be carried back and forth. And so today, I guess the newest you could say is Wi-Fi 6 or 802.11ax, but just calling it Wi-Fi 6 is probably easier. And so that's the latest standard that we're seeing on the market today. And so this is a sixth generation of Wi-Fi, uh, which continues to use the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands more optimally than before, which gives us more speed and, and more data that can be carried. I mean, we're already seeing Wi-Fi 6 on the latest cell phones and, and devices, but only on the most recent ones. And so Wi-Fi 6 routers and access points are also becoming more available, too. That's really interesting. So uh, tell us what Wi-Fi 6 will then mean for consumers, right? Because you mentioned faster speeds, you know, opening up uh, different avenues, different highways, uh, for for maybe lack of a better term. What does that mean for consumers necessarily? Does it just mean, oh, if I buy all of these different things that are Wi-Fi 6 enabled, that then I will have faster browsing speeds, things along those lines? Um, In a way, yes, that's definitely going to happen. But part of it, too, is kind of separating it um, into more lanes on a highway. If you think of a highway getting wider and more lanes being added and having specific traffic going through certain lanes, like an HOV lane or maybe a lane meant for um, you know bigger cars or bigger traffic, uh, different types of data that get carried have different priorities. And so if we can separate those and create more lanes, it's a lot more efficient, and that'll enable speed and, and just overall efficiency. Do you think that that then enables maybe, like like the highway analogy, right? If you have an HOV lane, then that's diverting cars over to, you know, to that lane, right? Uh, which means that there are less cars on the normal freeway then. So does does opening this up then allow for faster speeds across all of Wi-Fi? Yes, overall it should just, uh, but it's, it's hard to say, right? Because mm-hmm. as we have more and more connected devices, these these devices will demand things that we're not aware of yet. And that's kind of the cool thing about technology is that uh, it opens up more possibilities. But, you know, more more changes are coming. And so Wi-Fi 6 is the current state, but there was 5 before that and 4 before that. And so uh, as more technology opens up, we'll we'll find more uses for them. And, you know, of course, speed is, as a consumer, is what we want to experience, but also um, reliability of that connection. Um, Sometimes speed is what we look at. Oh, my internet is slow. But it's more about the quality of your connection that, that makes that difference. Um, oftentimes, the speed is just fine. But if you're sending data that's, that's corrupt or misread, then it has to resend that data. And that, that can cause congestion, too. All right. So, Chris, we've talked about Wi-Fi 6. So what other changes are coming to Wi-Fi that maybe that people should be aware of? Are there are any other innovations or things coming down the pipeline that, that people should know about? Yeah, great question, Tyler. There's actually significant changes coming to Wi-Fi, but, but these changes you should think of more as additions because the latest Wi-Fi standard should or typically will be always backwards compatible with previous generations. So the next step will be Wi-Fi 6E. E stands for extended. 
Tell me a little bit more about what that means for consumers. Is it similar to what we were discussing with Wi-Fi 6? Yeah, actually, it's it's kind of similar, but it's it's much greater too. So Wi-Fi 6 opened additional bandwidth within the 5 gigahertz band. So traditional Wi-Fi back, back in the day uh, was 2.4 gigahertz. Um, and then in 2009, 5 gigahertz band was added. And so now with Wi-Fi 6E, the 6 gigahertz band will be added. I mean, this is this is really huge. So it's going to enable something called multi-user, multiple input, multiple output. So MU, MIMO. It'll be much easier to understand with a quick internet search, um, but basically 14 additional 80 megahertz band channels and seven additional 160 megahertz channels are being added. What this means for consumers is that we'll experience greater network flexibility with reduced congestion. So in essence, we'll have faster, more reliable speeds with reduced latency. This basically means we'll there will be less delay between when we give an input and receive a response. So our Wi-Fi carries different types of data and this will be further optimized by having more bands and wider bandwidth. So imagine you know more and wider lanes added to a freeway for different types of traffic, a uh, superhighway if you will. It will further enable applications within our smart home and buildings, not just for our media consumption, but also safety and security. That's really fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, maybe for everybody out there that is uh, that are on Zoom calls all day long, you know, uh, maybe better connections, better video quality on your Zoom calls and that sort of thing, right? Yeah. Um, which <laughs> affects all of our uh, day-to-day lives these days. So um, recently, Chris, the, the SEC voted to make this change in the United States, you know, to open up uh, Wi-Fi 6E and that sort of thing. But other countries haven't yet followed suit. So what does that mean for engineers, providers, and consumers in the United States? The fact that the United States has opened up this highway, but maybe other countries haven't. Right. So uh, on April 23rd of this year, the FCC voted to make the 6 gigahertz band available for unlicensed use. Really, this opened the door for Wi-Fi 6E in the U.S. So other countries will need to make that decision. Uh, There's not necessarily a definitive date for most countries. Um, But what that means is we'll likely see it first here in the U.S. It makes a lot of sense since the U.S. leans on Wi-Fi maybe a little bit more than other countries where a cellular signal is often good enough and suitable. Only time will tell, but we hope to see other countries enable 6 gigahertz band for Wi-Fi use as well. So, you know, when we travel abroad, you know, our devices can take advantage of that. What that means for now is that engineers and providers and consumers will mainly focus on the U.S. market for Wi-Fi 6E devices. That's really, really interesting and certainly something that I think uh, the United States will uh, will take advantage of for the time being, for sure. So does opening a new frequency band like Wi-Fi 6E, like we, what we've been discussing, does it bring any challenges for, for engineers? What does it mean for them? Uh, of course. So with, with new changes and updates, there's always going to be challenges, but the benefits will definitely outweigh those challenges. Uh, I would say full usage of Wi-Fi 6E can't be completely known yet. You know, as with most new technologies, fresh ideas and applications for it are going to be discovered over time. And this is part of what makes it so exciting. Uh, New possibilities will be unlocked by our engineers, both in software and hardware. So I like to think of it as a bigger playground, a much bigger playground. It could be a little daunting at first, right, with all that space. But uh, with time and exposure, I'm I'm confident our engineers will definitely find a way to optimize uh, for current usage that we need and for future applications. Um, engineers and challenges kind of go hand in hand. And so we need to just enable and inspire our engineers to, to and give them the tools they need to, to make this successful. Definitely, definitely. So when should people expect to be able to use Wi-Fi 6E? Is this something that's available now? Do I need to rush out and get a, a modem that is cap- you know, capable of carrying Wi-Fi 6E you know, today? Or is this something that we need to you know, think about more for the future than, uh, than maybe next week? Yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, I wouldn't hold your breath or delay upgrading. It's going to take some time for a Wi-Fi 6E ecosystem to catch up. Uh, It's hard to predict. Uh, Companies move very fast these days. So we may see uh, a Wi-Fi E enabled access point or router before the end of the year, but more likely in 2021 and they'll probably become more common in 2022. Um, To experience the 6 gigahertz band, we'll need 6E enabled devices and access points. So what that means is, you know, devices like phones and laptops and basically things we touch and look at and access points are pretty much our Wi-Fi routers we have at home and businesses and and even outside. There's always going to be new technology around the corner, but we should probably decide based on our current and projected needs. So one consideration is how many connected devices you have at home right now. I mean, if you have a lot, it's likely none of them support Wi-Fi 6E. So uh, in order to really take advantage of it, you'll have to slowly or spend some some cash to update every device to support Wi-Fi 6E. 
Uh, so if you have a need today, you know, I would recommend you know, Wi-Fi 5 or even 6 would be more than appropriate. But there's no rush for this either because most devices don't support Wi-Fi 6 yet either. Uh, only the most recent and very select phones and cell phones, laptops support Wi-Fi 6. I mean, we're still early in the days of Wi-Fi 6, uh, so uh, no rush, but it's definitely coming. No rush. So uh, enjoy 6 for now and then uh, look ahead for 6E uh, maybe in a year or two. Right. That that seems to be the a good summary of that, right? Yeah, that's right. Definitely, definitely. So what kinds of challenges need to be overcome and, uh, and what kind of work needs to be done before Wi-Fi 6E is really widely available? Are, are there things that need to be accomplished before this is something that, that becomes you know, more ubiquitous within society? Yeah, I mean, for us as consumers, I, I guess the hardest part is to, to wait. <laughs> but um, with the band now available, right, licensed for use, um, most of the work is going to be on the design side. And so uh, companies are spinning up and preparing hardware and software. Um, but after that's done, we'll need to, to wait again for those products to be produced, built, and then shipped and made available for purchase. Uh, but again, you kind of need that whole ecosystem to really take advantage of it. So say you enter the market, you know, and you find a Wi-Fi 6E router and you buy it immediately. Well, if your phone and your, your laptop and the connected devices in your home don't have Wi-Fi 6E also, you'll really be just having Wi-Fi 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Fast and, and great, but it'll, it'll take some time for devices to catch up. Definitely. Absolutely. So, you know, one of the things we haven't discussed yet that I think is really important to talk about is uh, is Wi-Fi security, right? As more work is being done, you know, over Wi-Fi, people working from home, security has become, you know, a larger and larger topic. And more uh, more data, more information being shared from people working from home with documents that might be sensitive and things along those lines. So can you speak to the current state of security for Wi-Fi and maybe where that is now and where it could be moving in the future? Yeah, like as you mentioned, you know, with the availability of, of more bands and heavier usage, it's definitely going to be a, a topic that continues to be very important. And security is, is one of the areas that we don't hear as much about, but it's definitely very heavily focused on. Right, because as we have more and more of our privacy and more of our uh, daily needs um, satisfied through Wi-Fi, right, and our smart home um, garage door openers, things that tell us when someone's at the front door, you know, whether our windows are open, we kind of think of media consumption, but also, you know, there's less filters between us and what's out there, and so security is definitely going to be at the forefront of that. And so, I'm definitely not an expert on security, but I suggest being a smart consumer and doing your research choose a device and hardware that's reputable in the market um, from a company you trust um, and understanding your home Wi-Fi network setup, you know, making a strong password, limiting access, and uh, just things like that. So my password shouldn't be 1234? Yeah, that would be not a good idea. <laughs> okay. okay, good to know. I'm going to make a note of that. I'm going to make a note of that. Chris, is there anything about Wi-Fi that we haven't discussed at this point uh, in the podcast as we start to kind of bring things to a close today? Is there anything we haven't talked about or, uh, or anything you want to mention before we wrap up? There's probably a lot we haven't covered, but I think that's okay. I think mainly here we just want to focus on understanding that Wi-Fi is going to continue to evolve. I mean, it's in Generation 6E. That means there are many generations before that and more generations to come. And I would focus on the excitement around what with what's available today and and making sure that what's available supports the needs that you have and, and the upcoming needs that you have. And again, you know, we covered, you know, don't wait. Don't wait for Wi-Fi 6E. It could be some time. Um, just make sure you have what you need today. And if you don't, uh, find find expertise where they can advise and guide you. I think that's really sound advice. Chris Lee, product manager for antennas at TE Connectivity. Chris, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your your expertise on Wi-Fi. Hey, thanks again, Tyler. It was really fun. Absolutely. And thank you, everybody out there for listening to this episode of Connected World, a podcast from TE Connectivity. We appreciate it very much. Of course, if you haven't listened to the previous episodes of the podcast, make sure you go and check those out as well as we dive into numerous topics around the connected world, uh, talking about IoT devices and much, much more. So you're going to want to go back and check out those episodes. And of course, while you're there, subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify to stay up to date with everything going on in the world of connectivity. And we'll be back soon with more episodes of the podcast. But until then, I've been your host today, Tyler Kern. Thanks so much for listening.